New World is solved, but I think Josh Strife Hayes might be a little bit wrong, but really just on one point and after all it's just an opinion. It's true that with the guides, the infographics, everything you've seen on Reddit and YouTube, New World is pretty much a solved problem. If you're looking for the information, you can find the best way to level, the best weapons, where to get X, where to get Y. It's all out there for you if you're looking for it. And I think most of the hardcore audience probably agree with that and I very much agree with that. There's a famous phrase that says, given the opportunity, players will optimise the fun out of the game. And I think to some extent that might apply here. And I only really disagree with Josh on some very small points. But first let me say that I don't really blame the players or the YouTubers or the people on Reddit for one, trying to optimise the fun out of it. It's up to you to define what you say is fun and what you don't. If it's something you want to do as a player, a YouTuber, whatever, feel free, crack on, I completely understand that. I don't necessarily think Josh is blaming the player base either, and neither am I. And just because most of my guides are just actually information about the game, doesn't mean that if I had the knowledge that I wouldn't actually make these guides. So I'm not trying to cast shade on anybody for something that I probably would do. Mr. Strife Hayes seems to say that one solution is playing with like-minded players. And in New World, you can't do that because you can't choose your starting location. However, I just think that playing with like-minded players isn't really the solution that everybody's going to want and need to this problem. Now, there are other games that he himself mentions talking about like World Classic and stuff like that that have experienced this but really it feels like, like New World is actually like the first game properly releasing into this kind of information age era. There's Reddit, there's YouTube and everything's already known before the game's even out. I don't really remember this being the case with say like Elder Scrolls Online but maybe I'm just not remembering it correctly. And really, I think this is going to get worse. Like when we look at Ashes of Creation and any upcoming crowdfunded MMO, if ever, any of them are actually going to get made, then a lot of them have like very early public alphas or betas. And that's just going to exacerbate the subject and make it so that all the information is known just as much as New World, if not more. And really for New World, I think some of this problem does boil down to the alphas and the betas. Yes, the alphas were sort of like closed and with an NDA, but you can't make the players who played in it forget the information that they learned. And actually the closed beta and the open beta really weren't supposed to happen. We were supposed to have the preview event in last August and then we were supposed to go to the game release. However, because Amazon wanted to make sure that the game was working and correct and proper and all that kind of good stuff, they had to do these extra betas and delay the game. But we can't really be angry with uh, Amazon about it because a game that works is obviously going to be better than a game that we don't know that much about. Like I personally would rather play a game that is working than one that I'm like, what does this all do? So, I mean, I, I don't think we can be displeased with Amazon's choice. So what can actually be done about this issue? Yes, I do agree with Josh that a system that lets you play with your friends right from the off would be beneficial. And it's a shame that the game isn't shipping with that. I can very easily envision a system where you can pre-select one of the two lowest populated zones if you're within like a given period and maybe you have a refresh timer when you see that actually you're not going to be able to pick that zone and that would pretty much solve it and I think we have to be honest with ourselves this is likely coming the reason Amazon aren't doing this is because they're worried about overpopulation in some specific zones that's because we know which ones are going to be the fastest to level in and they know that the player base knows that as well therefore if they let people choose all that's going to happen is that they're going to get crowded in one zone so this is likely going to come i would put my money on this coming within two to four weeks of the game coming out and everybody will be like ah great but everybody will have already leveled but really nothing is going to take these guides offline or the reddit posts and the infographics away and nothing is really going to take away some players desire to optimize the fun out of the game because to them that optimization is the fun of the game the fact that they're sharing it as well is good they're happy to do that and the player base who wants to see that, they also want it because they're obviously going looking for that information. But I do think this optimization matters more in certain games. Whilst New World does have some obviously good PvE, a lot of the game is PvP focused. You know, we have the open world toggle on PvP, we have the forts in the open world, and a lot of the gameplay is sort of designed and resolves around that. Like the wars themselves you get by PvPing in the open world. The wars themselves are 50 versus 50 and that claims the territory. And a lot of the territory control is all like part of the content of the game. So of course a lot of players are going to want what's best. It just sort of makes sense. But there's two things that I think could help 
with this problem of having games optimized right from the start. One of them is obvious and will happen and the other one is probably a bit of a pipe dream. The obvious one is new content. When we get new content that hasn't been tested for months or even years, then it's really going to shake stuff up. When we get new features, when we get new weapons, for example, in New World, then the meta will change. And yes, some players will instantly try and find out what's the best, but there'll be a period of time where you actually get that sort of player exploration and it'll be available to everybody. So new content will inevitably help somewhat. But then the one that is a little bit of a pipe dream, and I don't think it's implemented in any current popular MMO, would be to have more randomized or procedurally generated content. Now I'm not saying this is viable in New World, I just don't think it is. And even if you can procedurally generate content or have it more randomized, it's not really going to stop people optimizing the best build Builds, it'll just be the tools that they use are already preset whereas what they're doing isn't it'll just be opening up one form of the exploration but really that I'm talking about non-static content and you can get that with some games like when I think about Ashes of Creation a lot of the content there is this node system and then the sieges and that's all content that is player driven and player generated and that you obviously can optimize to a certain extent but a lot of it is going to tell its own story as it gets made obviously when it comes to Ashes of Creation the people are going to know the best builds, the best class combos and that kind of thing. That's just inevitable. But when the focus of the game isn't that, then I think you have a really good chance. Now New World has a little bit of a problem here for my mind in that a lot of the content is actually relatively static. The wars are really static in its 50 versus 50 format and so are the battlegrounds. The open world and the forts, whilst not static, you're only like sort of temporarily killing a group or you're temporarily taking a fort it's not really going to tell a story that's all that different from what other people are experiencing in different servers. So I think New World's core issue is that it's an exploration of a core static world rather than having generated content by the players like say EVE Online, that kind of thing. Yes, there'll be some of it with the wars, but the wars are a little bit gated by high-end players basically because they're all going to have optimized the game and know what's best and now are they going to let the people who are just casually playing get in and some of that content the answer to that is no but overall new world feels like a sort of semi-casual game but some of the features don't necessarily in my mind seem to lead itself to be a fully casual game so there's a bit of a conflict there that i see so yeah my my only thing with josh's video really is that the starting area issue i just think it's sort of like a it's a temporary band-aid to a bigger problem that yes he mentions that the whole of the mmo genre is going to face this and guides ruining mmos but really just having it so that you can play with your friends in new world is just such a small part of the problem of a bigger issue that both new world and other games are facing which of course i'm sure he, he does admit I, I i just would like to say i love josh's content i agree with like 99.9 .9 of what he says and i agree with pretty much his video here i just think it's a very small issue to pick upon when it's partly done because of server balance and it'll probably get changed and really doesn't fix the core issue which i'm still open about needs a solution if you like this video then do press the like button if you're interested in new world content of all sorts then do subscribe to the channel have a most beautiful day goodbye